this is going to be a general love reading for all the signs. All right. Let's see what we're getting into today. I'm going to start off with my Oceanic Tarot. And we're going to dive right in. If you hear a slight whirring in the background, that is my fan. Pay it no mind. I need it to live. It's hot. All right. Why do I feel like this? Tapestry is coming off. I don't know. Okay, what do we need to know? Do I need to bring this camera closer? Is that better? Yes. Okay. What do you got for us today? Oh my God, hold on a second. All right, sorry, just a minute. And 31 seconds passed of bullshit. <laughs> Trying to get my bearings together, guys. Trying. All right, let's see. All right, what do we got? Thank you for allowing me to be a divine channel for source messages. It's rock and roll. Ooh, that one flipped out. Ten of Wands. So, feeling like we have a lot of responsibility. One second. Okay, sorry about that, guys. So many distractions. Great. I just, I get really hot when I channel, so I have to take my pants off. Put on some shorts really quick. We have Ten of Wands, Queen of Wands. All right, I can tell you right now, I feel like some of you are taking on way too much. <clears throat> There's a Divine Feminine energy. So this is probably for the Divine Feminines that I ch channel for, for the Feminines. I do have a lot of Feminines that watch me. I feel like you guys are taking on way too much responsibility right now um, with the Ten of Wands and also the Queen of Wands. So you are taking on a lot of responsibility and I feel like you can handle it all. I just want you to be cautious about burnout, okay? Like don't take on too much where you just are over exerting yourself, okay? Because though you are showing up as this Queen of Wands, telling me that you can take on all this responsibility, we don't want to take on too much, okay? Um, with the Six of Cups reflection, so... Hmm... I hope we're not letting something from the past hold us back. Let's let's keep going. Why do we have this Six of Cups here? What are we reflecting on, Spirit? Wow, abandonment. So, as a collective, a lot of you right now are going through this extreme healing period where you're healing and reflecting on periods of abandonment so you're healing the abandonment wound and this is so funny honestly because I literally just went through a period where I was healing my own abandonment issues so it makes perfect sense um, as a collective that we would be touching touching base with this right I mean literally I literally just this past the whole month of August was working really, really hard to heal that abandonment issue because it was funny. I was going through a notebook of my old stuff 
and I found this um, list of things that um, a long time ago that my spiritual teacher told me that I needed to work on, you know, and I say my spiritual teacher because um, when I first awakened, I had someone that I was studying under and he told me these things that I had to work on. And one of those was abandonment issues. And I was like, I don't have abandonment issues. And back then I had so much ego. I didn't see it. I was like, I don't have abandonment issues. Right. Fast forward, literally. So this was in 2015. Um, fast forward to now 20 or er, well, I'm sorry, 2018. I said 2015, but it was in 2018. So fast forward now to 2023. And I'm realizing that most of my relationships fall apart because I have abandonment issues. So I've been healing those um, issues so that I can have a healthy, balanced relationship. And I'm not talking about just romantic relationships, though, you know, that has been a big part of it. Um, I'm talking about just relationships in general I've had with, you know, a lot of people. So, you know, some of you are healing that wound as well. And like I said, it makes sense. So we have six of swords, which is calm. Um, we had six of cups. So there's some of you are extremely spiritual. Like six is to me represents spiritual growth, um, a spiritual journey. So if you found me, you're obviously very spiritual because I'm extremely spiritual. Like I talk a lot about the divine, you know, d the collective consciousness, um, ascension, things like that. Apologize for any background noise. There's a lot of people awake in this house right now. So Six of Swords is about finding inner peace and inner calm. So once you work on healing those abandonment issues, that's where you're going to find your inner peace and your inner calm. Um, you are your own inner strength and inner peace, okay? There's no outside sanctity outside of you. You are the inner peace, okay? You find it first within yourself and then it'll be reflected in your reality. Ooh, there is a card here that is, wow. So look, I'm flipping through the cards. I'm shuffling and this card is flipped up and it's the lovers. I don't know how that's going to play in or if it's going to play in, but we're going to leave it out because there are no accidents. I say that all the time. And look at this. This one's flipped up too. <clears throat> reflection, self-reflection and judgment. So a lot of us right now, I know we just got out of uh, Venus retrograde. A lot of us were doing a lot of self-reflecting, figuring out, you know, what is holding us back from our choices in regards to love. You know, where can we better ourselves in order to be better for um, the collective consciousness? Where can we better ourselves so that we can make room for love and things of that nature, right? Okay, let's get two more cards and then we'll figure out why this lover's card is out. Thank you, Spirit. We have the High Priestess, um, Intuition, using your intuition. Well, you know, if I'm reading for the feminine consciousness, yes, this is, we do this every day. <laughs> this is not nothing. This is not anything new. Like we're constantly using our intuition, right? To figure out what our next step is. Like this is a given. Okay. So as to why this card would come out, um, I'm not sure, but she is holding the infinity symbol, which might mean something to someone. So Wow, and then we have Two of Wands vision. So the Two of Wands is about a divine partnership, and it's a shared vision that you have together. So some of you are using your intuition in order to find your divine counterpart, right? All the signs are pointing to it. We have Two of Wands, which is a card of partnership and working together with your partner. And then we have the lovers and self-reflection. So let's find out why we have the lover's card here. I'm going to put these all back just in case we have repeating energies. And we'll put these cards up here, which is the lover's and judgment. 
All right, why do we have the lovers here? Tell me why we have the lovers here, please. What do we need to know about the lovers card, please? Drama, Knight of Swords. Oh, that would make no damn sense. We have the lover's card because of drama. <laughs> so the Knight of Swords is about being overly hasty, um, making decisions out of necessity, not because you're using your higher self guidance. Um, it's about using way too much logic. So it's kind of a conflicting energy with the lovers. I feel like some of you are going back and forth, not, not. So it's this energy of like wishy-washy. It's like, I want love. I don't want love. Do I want love? I don't want love. Um, you want it, but you're being logical about it. And when it comes to love, especially divine connections, there's no logic involved. It's all about feeling into things. It's feeling into the heart chakra. The heart chakra is I love, I feel, right? It's not, it's nothing to do with using your brain or your logic. That's, you know, crown chakra shit. All right, what do we got the judgment here for? That one flew out. Strength, stability. So it's Leo energy. Some of you are reflecting on your um, your past and how it is influencing your stability right now. You're feeling like you have to be, you've always had to be the strong one in the past. You've always had to be the one to hold it all together for everyone. And you're trying to figure out, you know, maybe in the past, like, if you've been too strong, if you've been too dependable, it's like at this point now you're craving stability for yourself. You're craving, um, you know, all of the things that, you know, in the 3D world would constitute stability, which is like a home and, you know, a partnership, uh, maybe a good financial situation. And you feel like you've been, you know, too strong for too long for too many people. And so there's this feeling of sort of wanting to let go and surrender to the divine, right? This is also Leo energy. So some of you could be dealing with a Leo or you could be a Leo. The lovers is Gemini energy. I'm not sure what judgment is. It might be Libra. Um, what deck should we use next? Why don't we do a Heal Yourself card to see what aspects that we are healing as a collective that's going to help us in our twin soul journey and in our journey in general, right? I have to be careful about shuffling because I sliced this finger probably can't see it. it's really there it is um with like this metal razor type thing oh my gosh it hurts so bad it was actually a mosquito coil um it was like this metal thing that the mosquito coil goes in and you use it to prop the mosquito coil up so that it burns properly and that thing was sharp as a razor blade and it sliced my finger so deep and it bled so much and it was so painful and ironically, it's only taken about, it's day three and it's already almost healed. So my body does heal incredibly fast, but it was incredibly painful. And I really wish it wouldn't, it hadn't have happened. But I spent a lot of time outside today grounding, had my feet in the earth and it felt really nice to feel the grass tickle my toes. And I got a lot of sun, a lot of sun codes. 
So I'm here bringing the energy back. Boom. Soulmate number 14. So add it up and it's number five. Four and one is five. So I feel like there's going to be a lot of changes in your connections right now. If you have someone that you feel like is your soulmate, Twin Flame, um, either way, it's a really deep spiritual connection. There's going to be some changes in your connection. I'm not sure if those are good or bad. But you're healing um, things in regards to your connection as well. For some of you, your partner, for some of you feminines, your partner is in no contact right now. I see that the masculine in this, um, he's, he's like a ghost. You can see through him. So he's there, but he's not there, if that makes sense. He's with her, but he's not with her. And the moon behind them lets me know that there's a lot more that needs to be revealed in this connection that has not been connected yet. Yep, see, look, number 11, take off your mask. One or both of you are wearing a mask in this connection. It could be the feminine because this is, you know, a female on here. Oh, it's number two. Is that number two? Yeah. It says two, take off your mask. So you might be trying to find a balance as to, like, whether or not to show too much of your authentic self or you feel like you don't want to reveal too much too soon you might be like I keep hearing like dancing around the truth like because the, you know there's shoes here like ballerina shoes some of you could be a dancer I used to do ballet But it's like dancing around trying to, dancing around who you really are. Like only showing bits and pieces of yourself, right? Trying to heal that aspect of, you know, should I be authentic all the time or most of the time or all of the time? And the answer always is all of the time. Be authentic all of the time. You shouldn't worry what people think about you. I understand like in divine connections, Sometimes you want to only show the aspects of yourself that you think they will accept, but how can you expect them to love the whole of you if you don't show them all, all the parts of you, right? We have 30, courage. So yes, you know, spirit is encouraging you to be your authentic self, not be afraid, do not let fear hold you back. Take off your mask, it's time. You are divinely guided. Number three is the number of divinely guided ascension energy right the ascended masters let's get one more card spirit all right number five sadness so again we have number five which is the number of change so these changes may be making you feel like um stuck in this feeling of loneliness and um, feelings of, you know, missing your divine counterpart. And it's because your relationship is changing. It's evolving in order for you to reach your highest level of consciousness in this connection, right? And change is never easy. You know, missing someone, um, I understand if they're not here in the physical, how you would miss them, especially if you do have a divine connection with them and you're used to talking to them every day, right? Um, but understand that everything that's happening in this dimension, in this timeline is so that when you guys do come together, You need to be at your best self so that things go smoothly, so that the connection flows, 
so that you can feel the power of God and the power of the divine in your connection. So understand that though they're not with you, they might not be with you in the physical or even emotionally, right? But they're always with you. Your divine counterpart is always with you. They're never far away from you, okay? Just feels like they are. They're always with us, okay? We're going to pull some spirit messages. And then where is, okay, I meant to get this deck up. We're, we're going to end with the roomy oracle like we always do. We're going to get some messages from spirits. And then we're going to pull a couple moon cards, power of activation cards. And we're going to end with the roomy oracle. Oh my god. Did y'all see that for real? Do you see how spirit was like, boom. So something's coming to a climax. Did you see how those cards just burst out, dude? For real. To me, that felt very um, climactic. It was like something's coming to a head and it's going to explode in a good way. Felt very joyful. It was so powerful, it literally knocked on my everyday I'm hustling thing. Wow. Okay. Someone's bursting at the seams. What is it? It's love, right? It's that feeling. That feeling of love. It's overwhelming them. Whoever they are. It's about to burst out. All right. What are the messages from spirit? Enough shenanigans, spirit. All of that for... Just to create an example, huh? <laughs> we have seduction. Ooh, told you something was about to pop off. Told you something was about to climax. <laughs> it's seduction. Ooh, you hear that? Ambulance in the background. Bells and any type of sirens are always confirmation from spirit. Fate. Wow, see? There's some kind of faded meeting that's going to end in seduction. Ooh, it just got hot up in this booch, ain't it? Mm -mm -mm. Manipulative. So someone's tired of being manipulated by their karmic partner. I feel like for most of the, the masculines, they're cutting all ties with their karmics. They're tired of being manipulated in their love life. Brown eyes. Let's get one more spirit. And the answer is no. So I don't know what that means, but I'm sure it means something to someone. So to me, it feels like we got manipulation, brown eyes. The answer is no. So, you know... Some masculine here, they're literally telling their karmic, the answer is no, I've moved on. They're done. The answer is no. The answer is no. They don't want it anymore. They don't want the drama anymore. They don't want... They don't want the hassle. They want inner peace. They found their inner peace, and so... You know, that's, that's what's resonating now. There's no other, there's no more drama. There's no more manipulation. They saw through the manipulation. <clears throat> They're heading towards the divine connections. All right, let's get our final cards. These ones popped out, so we're taking them. First quarter moon in Scorpio, release your blocks. Full moon in Pisces, forgive. It's time to forgive yourself for all of the things you did when you were not awakened. It's time to forgive everyone who's ever hurt you and to love them and move forward. It's not about excusing what they did. It's about moving forward, knowing that you can forgive them for you so that you can have peace 
and you have that inner love, right? Forgive them, forgive yourself. Move forward with the divine energy of God, okay? There's two fish here. It's divine counterparts. First quarter moon in Scorpio. It's time to release your blocks, all of your limiting beliefs and your blocks. We've all been doing that, right, as a collective consciousness for what? For as long as we can recall. So just keep going. There's a breakthrough coming. You just got to keep going. Don't give up. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep using your positive affirmations, your subliminals, whatever it is you do to reprogram your mind. Okay? Keep reprogramming your brain. Keep rewiring it. First moon, first quarter moon in Pisces. Honor your feelings. Yes, whatever it is you're feeling right now is valid. Okay? In the love department, whatever it is you're feeling for whatever person, it's valid. It's for a reason. Don't try to shove it down. Don't try to analyze it. You feel this way for a reason. You have a divine connection through to source God with your crown chakra. Everything is happening for a reason. There's no accidents. You feel this way for this person for a reason. Don't question it. Just roll with it. Last card. Embrace the flow of life. Full moon in Gemini. See, if you notice in most of these cards, look, there's two. It's a divine connection. Two fish. Two people, right? Twins. Twins. Very twin flamey. That's all I'm going to say. Okay, so we're done with that. We're going to do a power of love activation card. And then we're going to end with a roomy card with a message from the divine. All right. What is being activated right now in the twin souls? What is being activated right now in the twin souls? What are we healing? We have forgiveness. Wow, twice. See, you are not able to activate the power of love in order to release past hurts. So, spirit is really hammering this down, guys. We got this again. Forgiveness. Forgiveness. Learn to forgive. Learn to forgive. Not for them. Fuck them. Not for them. It's not for them. It's for you. It's so you can be happy, so that you can find your divine connection to God and in order to have that, you have to forgive yourself for everything that you did that you thought you shouldn't do. You have to forgive everyone who ever hurt you or made you feel less than and bless them. You want to know why? Because when your blessings roll in, let me tell you, they're going to feel really dumb that they fell asleep on someone as amazing as you. So forgive them, bless them, and Open your arms for your blessings, okay? Activate that power of love. Love is your divine state. Individuality. You leave your unique stamp of love on everything you do. So this is about putting your foot in your lettuce. <laughs> Burger King foot lettuce. <laughs> you put your foot in everything that you do, your heart and your soul, your passion, your oof, okay? Keep doing that because people like it. You are fucking unique and beautiful. Cooperation. Again, we got this in the last reading. Remember, we're learning to cooperate with our twin. We're learning to blend our energies. In your quest to manifest the energy of love, you realize that every person and experience that comes into your experience has value. Like I said, trust your journey. Trust the feelings. Trust that your higher self, which is you, knows the next step. Don't give up. Okay? Let's end with this roomy card. 
If I am not allowed to give up, neither are you. Okay? Point blank. Period. Ta. Every day we're going. We we'll keep going. We just keep going. We just keep going. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. Just keep jumping. I'll say it again. Our natural state is love. Okay? You are love. You are not lacking any love because you are love. You are loved by God. You are loved by the divine, the universe, whatever you want to call it. What's the last message for our beautiful twin flames in this journey? Give us some peace and hope, which is all we need. Divine love. Let's love transform. Number 14. Again, it's number five. There's so much change in the air. Can you feel it? It's crisp. It feels like September because it is September. It feels like change. September to me feels like change. The leaves are falling. There's change in the air. The air feels crisp as fuck, right? It's change. Number five, it's change. Change. Five is the number of big happy changes, right? My son, he always likes to say, when 555 five, five comes on the clock, he runs to me and he goes, Mom, big happy changes. He's 11 years old. You know, I have his channel linked below if you want to watch and subscribe to his channel too. He's almost at 60 subscribers. I'm so proud of him. But, you know, he, he puts a lot of work into his channel. He puts his foot in his lettuce. <laughs> Burger King foot lettuce. Okay, the human gift. Oh, heart. What is your excuse for these blunders? Such loyalty is offered by the beloved, yet so much treason comes from you. Such kindness is offered by the beloved, yet so much defiance and resistance comes from you. Such grace is offered by the beloved, yet so much fault and failure comes from you. Such attraction is offered by the beloved with sweetness and generosity, yet such jealousy comes from you with so much doubt and suspicion. And that's from Rumi. Wait, this is not the right one. This is number 17. I'm reading the wrong one. <gasps> well, there are no accidents. I guess we needed to hear that too. Weird, right? Okay, let love transform. The spring of love arrives to transform the dust into a garden. The call is heard from the heavens to bid the wings of soul to fly. The sea becomes filled with pearls. The dry land receives the water of life. The stone becomes a ruby and the body becomes all soul. Rumi. Love is my medicine intelligent medicine it takes death and makes it a pathway passageway into greater life what genius is this a genius that will render as a pathway to life see they're saying love is a pathway to life i have found a bench upon which we may be seated nay not a bench a love seat <laughs> it is carved a precious ruby it sits under the gentle shade of an ancient tree that thrives in love's garden. Come, sit with me, beloved, as we let the whispers of the great beloved penetrate our hallowed ears carried upon this sweet afternoon breeze. As the sun begins to set, the colors become vibrant. Even if we are deaf to the beloved's tender whispers, we shall not be blind. We shall be captured by the vivid display of the beloved's artistry and be transported into peace. It said, this oracle comes to you as a living spiritual gift. Whether you realize it or not, you have triumphed. You have blossomed succeeded you've cast aside that which was unworthy and taking up love's way how much delight there is from all those that walk this way of love of life to find another precious companion in their midst you are welcomed into this world this world where love finds a way 
There is nothing impossible for love because it's not bound by the mind. And because of this, all manner of miraculous grace works through it in endless creative variety. Wow. Wow. Wow, you've already triumphed, you sweet, beautiful soul. See, I told you, you've already won. The battle's already been won, and it's in your favor. Okay, love's already won. You don't even have to worry because everything's already taken care of. You've already, you've already won your beloved, okay? There's no battle to fight because the divine already says you've won already. It's yours. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this reading. We're going to conclude um, with that beautiful message of success. Um, if you'd like to book a reading with me, all of my information is in the description box below. Um, you just click on the little link that says Goldie Link. And that's how you book a reading with me. All right, I love all of you so much. Remember, the divine loves you as well.